Fall of 1814, the company opens. So we're coming right now on the 200th anniversary, which is, uh, it's, to me, it's, it's a major, major, major event. It's the 200-year anniversary of the Industrial Revolution in America, uh, which began here in Waltham. And the significance here in Waltham, um, I think sometimes we don't give ourselves credit for what took place here. Uh, when I was a kid, I worked in the mill. It wasn't a textile mill. Um, <laughs> But it, it was 1970, and I had a job down there. I built sailboats, um, and they were real. They were fiberglass sailboats. I worked in a factory for for one summer. I was making two dollars and fifty cents an hour. Uh, I was making a hundred dollars a week. 1970. I was a sophomore in high school. I was the richest kid at Waltham High School, <laughs> and I was working in a building there. It was the it was the Boston Manufacturing Company. You, you know what we called it? The mill. So where do you work? I worked down at the mill, and it, no one knew what happened there. And Waltham didn't, it, they never really embraced it. And it's only in the last 25, 30 years that we start saying, this is one of the most historic sites in the country, that this is where American industry began. Uh, Life magazine back in 1975, they did a, a, an edition. It was called the 100 most significant events in American history. Fourth is the Boston Manufacturing Company in Waltham. And, you know, and we sometimes shortchange ourselves. We, the, the history, that took place at, at Boston Manufacturing and at Waltham Watch Company, it, it's enormously significant. And I think we've kind of, um, and I don't understand why, but we've kind of neglected that part of our history. Okay, so he opens in 1814. Uh, what are his objectives? First of all, he's not a utopian manufacturer. So people who kind of idealize Francis Cabot Lowell and say, well, he wanted to open a mill just to prove that we could have good working conditions, they're wrong. He's a businessman. His main objective, he wants to make money. And, and you really can't divide, uh, deny that. The other thing he wants to do, though, he wants to avoid poverty. He had seen the conditions in England. He had seen, uh, he, he wrote about them in his, when he used to write home. And he, he talked about the, the beggars and thieves that he saw in England. He talked about the degraded workers. And he came to Waltham. And, yeah, he wants to make money, but he wants to avoid that type of thing. And he's a federalist, um, but he's trying to fit manufacturing. Remember, it's the early American Republic. He's trying to fit manufacturing into Thomas Jefferson's vision of the country. And Jefferson is talking about uh, an agrarian republic. And um, could you, in this idea that if you, if you brought European manufacturing into America, You'd bring in European corruption. You'd uh, that th th you'd taint the American experiment. What Francis Cabot Lowell is trying to do is say we can take manufacturing, we can fit it inside of the Jeffersonian agrarian model. Um, how does he try to do that? He builds streets. Uh, he builds River Street. He builds Pleasant Street. He builds Willow Street. He plants trees along the streets. Now you think of that, 200 years ago, he's landscaping the streets. He built a park along the Charles River. They set aside space for the Waltham Common. Uh, he starts Waltham's fire department. Uh, he he built a church on the Common. So he's, you, you can see step by step what Lowell and his associates are trying to do. They're trying to avoid what they had seen in Europe. They're trying to bring English manufacturing to America without the problems associated with English mill towns. And the most important thing he did, and this is something that historians have neglected, he opened schools. And these are not schools for mill workers. These are not schools just for the kids of mill workers. These are public schools open to all Waltham citizens. Now, now just think of what that would be like today. Imagine if Home Depot were running an elementary school. Or uh, Costco, the Costco elementary school. So here you have a, a, a corporation in Waltham, and they're going to open up three schools. And the first one is built on Elm Street. Um, it's right opposite the Common. It opens in 1817, uh, $584. And if you look in the company records, everything is meticulously, even the nails, so much money for nails, so much money for bricks. And they put $584, and they open that in 1817. They buy another mill, if you know where um, 
uh, star market is on River Street. There was another mill down there. It was called the Waltham Cotton and Wool Company. And they buy them out, and they had a school, and they take over the management of that school also. So this is a second school. Next time you're on Willow Street, if you drive down towards ProTech, right before you come to the Chinese restaurant, look at the street there, School Avenue. And it's, a, it's, it's no wider than a driveway. It's called School Avenue because that's where the factory school was. So you had one on Elm Street, you had one down there. And in 1837, they opened the third school. And if you know where the car wash is on Elm Street, um, as you pull into the car wash on the right, there was a brick and stone, it was called the Stone Schoolhouse. Uh, they built that for $1,000. In the basement of that, they ran a, um, uh, I guess you'd call it a preschool today, but they had a preschool down there, and then they had a school up above. So they're opening up schools. Uh, they're paying the teachers' salaries. So the teachers, they're public school teachers working in public schools paid for by the corporation. And the salary uh, every month, and all you teachers in here will now appreciate all the money we make. Uh, it, the first entry, it says paid S. Burroughs, $12. And Miss um, Burroughs made $12 for 1817, 1818, 1819, and then her name disappears and other names came in, but $12 a month, which was considered pretty good wages for back then. Um, they're also they're, they're paying for books. They're paying for the wood to heat the school. They're painting the schools, and they they got a small subsidy every year from the from the town that, that the town would kick in money to help them run the schools. Inside the schools, what were they like? Um, unfortunately, none of the teachers ever wrote about them. Uh, I found one account, and it's a uh, if you ever go to the public library in 1860, the Waltham Sentinel they published a a lengthy account, and they, there was a high school reunion, it's called High School Reunion, and it was a guy named uh, James Moore, and he, was, he spoke at the high school reunion, he was reminiscing about elementary school. And he went to the factory school, and it's a, it, it goes on and on, he describes everything about the factory school in the 1820s. Now this was a school on Elm Street, and he talks about it, he said it faced a cornfield and a potato patch. That's Waltham Common. And he said you'd walk in, and it was kind of like, uh, if you're familiar with the Waltham High School, like the lecture hall. So the seats rose from the front into the back. Uh, there was a huge desk in the front. He described a huge desk. He said six boys could fit underneath it at the same time. And um, the girls were on one side, the boys were on the other. Uh, he writes that the worst punishment that could be inflicted on any student if a girl misbehaved, the girl had, remember these are under 12, the girl had to sit on the boy's side, and if the boys misbehaved, they had to sit on the girl's side, and that was like the ultimate punishment. And he talks about, um, in the machine shop at the Boston Manufacturing Company, they had a solar, they made a solar system. So they took the planets and they put together this replica of the solar system, and they had it hanging from the ceiling. And it was supposed to work, but it never did, kind of like the computers at the high school. <laughs> I couldn't resist. <laughs> and it, was, <laughs> it was supposed to work, uh, but it never did. And he says eventually um, th the kids took it off the ceiling and they brought it outside and they used it to bowl on Elm Street. So they, they used the different planets and they'd bowl up and down Elm Street. And the other thing he talks about, which is kind of interesting, uh, once a year they had examination day. And examination day, I would compare to the MCAS testing. It was the high stakes testing of the 1820s. And the members of the school committee would arrive in Waltham, they'd go to the schools, and they would hear the kids recite, they would test the kids. Um, the, 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 uh, Mr. Moore, when he's describing, in, in the, describing what happened, he said the night before the girls went to the school, they cleaned the school, they decorated the school, they brought in um, like evergreen bows and they put them on the walls and they scrubbed the school and all the boys and girls got dressed up and the parents were there. This was like a you know, big moment for them. And the school committee arrives and he describes him as a portly platoon of the most substantial residents of the town. 